Hello and welcome everyone to tonight's webinar. I have with me Dr. Mike Reed. He's going to be sharing with us the secrets of successful marketing. And it's, it's an extreme honor to have you here with us, uh, Dr. Uh, Reed. This is, for those of you who don't know, if you don't know uh, Dr. Reed, he is the founder of, uh, is it Chiropractic Mission International? Is that right, Dr. Reed? No, well, well, we do mission trips, but the uh, the program is called Chiropractic Masters. So it's chiropractic Dash Chiropractic Dash Masters. Com. That's right. Awesome. Well, again, thank you for being here. And, and if you don't mind, share with us a little bit about uh, who you are, how you got there, and what it is that you do. Well, you know, thank you very much. You know, it's it's been uh, quite a long trip over the last 20 years. I've been in practice much like uh, the doctors on this phone call. Uh, we built a practice as, as cash wellness based, um, over a thousand uh, patient visits a week. I'm not giving away the care, so we were able to bill well over a million million per year and without any insurance whatsoever. And wow. what happened? It's just because of my, um, I guess, my seminar junkiness. <laughs> I would travel everywhere and just learn from the best coaches out there. We started getting uh, groups of doctors who were following us around in practice. Started off as three doctors per day sometimes, and we had small groups of 12 people that would come to the office. So we gave like day seminars that grew into 50, and I decided, well, I'm going to start coaching because our first seminar that we launched, we had 100 doctors at, and we, our highest uh, back in 2008 was 450 doctors that came to one of our seminars. And it was kind of interesting because the number one thing over those years that we discovered is that uh, doctors really want three things. And number one, they want to see more new patients. I've never met a doctor who wanted to see less. Uh, they wanted to make more money, and they want to have better balance in both family and life. So chiropractic masters evolved um, from that. It was basically teaching doctors how to attract new ones, and then from there, how to convert them to care, how to get them onto lifetime wellness care. Because, you know, the beauty of it is being able to walk at your practice on a Monday morning and have over 200 patient visits that are there for wellness. So you're just adjusting. And uh, over those 20 years, it just flourished. And I got to the point where after 20 years, I was I had to choose coaching or practice. I decided to sell that practice to uh, my associate and now focusing on, on just coaching and then creating wellness, uh, which is uh, the sister company of uh, CLA, Chiropractic Leadership Alliance, picked us up to actually coach their clinics as well. So we're in the process of, of working with them and, and really just helping doctors worldwide um, from Australia, UK, US, and Canada uh, build a practice of their dreams. And we have just an enviable success rate. Wow. Wow. Well, I mean, obviously you do this day in and day out. And, and, like, and, and I have a deep respect for coaches like you who have – been in the trenches and done it yourself and had huge, huge success, and now you just help other doctors do that every day. And now we get to, you know, I, I've always believed I can help more people by helping more doctors. You know, instead of helping a 1,000 a week, we want to stretch it to, you know, 100,000, a million a week. How do you do that? You get an yeah. army of like-minded doctors who want to serve people. And, you know, one of those keys, because we are more of a, a, a fee for service, especially in the countries that are going more cash and less insurance, and we're seeing that uh, big time in the U.S., a lot of doctors are deciding to go more cash. Doctors are realizing they've got to market their, their services. They've got to be out there, and they've got to be, uh, you know, um, building a successful practice. You know, there's a quote by uh, Jay Abraham, who's one of the marketing gurus out of California, and, he said you know, the secret to building a successful practice is a predictable and constant marketing plan. And I agree with that. I agree you've got to constantly be out there marketing yourself, promoting yourself um, in order to get the new patients in. Yes, I, and I agree too. I think it has to be consistent. I think it has to be persistent and, and consistent, and it has to be a system. And that's what so many of us were, were missing, is we don't have any of that. And, and exactly, and you know, we run a seminar November 8th, 9th called Prosperity. Everybody's welcome to come to that one. And Prosperity is all about the new patient machine. How do I create multiple mm -hmm. pillars of a high return on investment marketing, things that work, things that, you know, like your website, it should be a 724 ATM. It really should. It should be producing new ones and producing sales. So how do I turn all of this around? How do I build the practice of my dreams? And you know, I tell doctors, if you're not interested in a million-dollar practice, then how about a half a million? And, and most doctors would be, you know, tickled pink to be able to do, you know, 42000 a month or even 250000 per month. Because sure. the average chiropractor in North America does about 100000 and they're struggling. 
Well, the key to that is really turning on the new patient machine. So Absolutely. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, you know, what I want to do with the doctors out there, if you're, you're listening, um, you know, this is what I, I, some clients will pay me thousands of dollars per month to, list, to, to you know, be uh, coached on. And I want to share with you guys um, some of the keys to the secrets of successful marketing. Now, what is it that actually works in the marketing world? And then I'm going to talk about um, some of the marketing tools that you should be using uh, over the next, you know, the next uh, year, the next, or, you know, September 2013, right through to September 2014. These are things that work for a lot of my clients. They've worked for me. So when I can teach you, you know, any fluff and stuff that's not going to work, it's really the, the tools that are going to help move people in your practice. So let's just talk about the elements first because all of these elements really – um, parlay into the marketing tools. Uh, number one is direct response. And what I mean by that is you want to create um, health passes, family gift certificates, tools which allow people to respond at a lower entrance fee. And the numbers we've discovered over the years, anywhere from 37 up to about a 97, we've discovered that you get this what we call a peak of the bell curve where you get a maximum number of people um, coming in on a lower entrance fee most doctors, their entrance fees are too high, and once they get over, especially in the 100 and over 150, we start seeing a drop off of new patients. And, you know, one thing I want to stress to the doctors on the phone with me or listening to this call is you don't make your dollars the income from the new patient. You make it from people being on care. So I'm all about a low entrance fee, and you know, case in point, I had a doctor in Alberta number of years ago, and his fee was $250. Now, he had a specialty technique, but he wasn't able to crack more than 10 or 12 new patients per month. At $250, guess what? It was a financial barrier. So we got him to lower that fee. I said, let's just try it for 30 days. And he got it down to 97. He, oh man, I had to twist his arm to do that. But, you know, he was, he thought I was crazy. I said, try it for 30 days. You got nothing to lose. Well, his 20000 a month collections, guess what happened? He had a record month. It went up to 40000 because all of a sudden, he had over 40 new patients that month. And he looked from the 10 and went, oh, 40 new ones. And he realized why his income went up, because he allowed lots of new patients in. So he had a lower entrance fee. And there's a lot of different tools you can use from like a you know, Groupon to, um, like you said, health passes in your, in your practice. I'll talk about a few. But you know, doctors, you really want to take a close look at your fee and just uh, see if it's too high. Next thing in, in successful marketing is what we call a USP, a UCA, or something called a catalyzing statement. And what a USP is, is unique selling proposition, or what we call a unique competitive advantage. What is it that you have as a tagline that gets people to think about what it is that you're selling? Um, we have a practice in Providencialis, Turks and Caicos. And um, my wife at the time was asking, she says, you know, what should we have as a USP? And I said, well, let's create the catalyzing statement, um, making Provo the healthiest island in the world. So when you walk in, you see courtyard chiropractic underneath it, making Provo the healthiest island in the world. And people would see that and they'd go, whoa, this guy's serious. He's serious about, you know, our health. It gets them on board with your mission. So looking at your tagline, it doesn't matter what it is. My coaching tagline is empowering doctors worldwide. It's, it's about how to empower you in, in all aspects of life and practice. So a USP or a UCA don't have the name of your practice at the top of your, your banner on your website or your direct mail piece, whatever you do. People don't care about that. The USP or unique competitive advantage or the catalyzing statement usually has the words you or your ask a question and has an emotional response. So again, put your, your clinic information at the bottom of your ad. Um, next thing is what I call a purple cow. And feel free to jump in if you have any questions there. No, the I love this thing. stuff, man. Take notes know, like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you know, most people with pens are smoking by now. If it's wood, it's on fire. But, you know, this, this is that. And seriously, uh, this is the stuff that works, guys. I mean, I, I use this in my, I use it in my own marketing for, for coaching. So, you know, this is the marketing 101 that works even in today's world. The next, point number three, is what we call a purple cow. I always ask the doctors this. I said, what's the difference between your practice and the guy down the road? Because you, you drive down uh, uh, the streets of Scottsdale, Arizona, there's a chiropractor on every corner. I was shocked to see this, and they're all the same. All the, all the signs said chiropractor, chiropractor, chiropractor. Nobody had a uniqueness. And it's a story by Seth Godin of a family driving in France, 
and everybody stopped at the side of the road, and they're looking in the field of all these black and white cows, and there's this purple cow. And everybody's just gawking at it, wondering how this purple cow came to be. And the family gets in the car, and they drive down to the next town. They're having lunch at a cafe. And what do you think the conversation was all about? It was about the purple cow. And guess what? When they went to the next town for supper, the same thing. So here's my question, Docs. What makes you unique? What is that brand, that Starbucks, that Coca-Cola, the McDonald's, what is it, the uniqueness of your business? What makes you different and totally awesome to everybody that would they want to come to see you versus the chiropractor down the street? So, you know, really take a look at your uniqueness and how can I brand that? Here's the next thing, and this is, this is going to split guys' heads wide open. It's return on investment. When I ask doctors, how much are you investing in marketing, um, they look at me uh, like I have two heads because most doctors don't. When I put $50 in or I put $100 in, here's what I want you to understand is that marketing is never a cost. It's an investment. And one thing that you want to do is have an ROI, a return on investment. So for every dollar you put in, you should be getting at least four to five return on investment. Case in point, if you looked at your ROI on your yellow pages, chances are it's going to be pretty low unless you have a uniqueness. And most doctors will pay that $500 per month, $6,000 a year, for their yellow pages and, and have you know, just a very low number of new patients coming in. So when we look at ROI, we always look at what is the cost of my product. We actually create a log. It's called a marketing return on investment log. And then what number of people come in from that? And then what was the investment from those people coming in? How much did I make? I put $2,000 into a direct mail piece. It's like, oh my gosh, $2,000. But if we got 12000 back within 30 days, guess what? That's a six to one return on investment. And that's hot. You can't even in the markets today put 2000 in and get 12000 back. The next is testimonials. I want to emphasize that testimonials sell. People ask me, Dr. Mike, if you were to do one thing, just one thing in marketing, that's all you could do, what would it be? I say testimonials because testimonials uses the power of authority to validate who you are and what you do. And, you know, we had a day in my practice. This is, this is just a – I'm going to give this to the doctors out there. This is an easy tool to use is what you want to do is have a testimonial day. And we um, had a video camera set up. It was just a flip camera on a tripod. We had this in this room. And I had my assistant Sally at the front. And patients were coming in, and she would say to them, write this down, we're having a testimonial day. Would you like to do video or picture with a print testimonial? Follow me. And as she took their hand and walked them to the back, she said, when you give a testimonial for, for Dr. Mike for the results with chiropractic, we're going to give you a protein bar. And we had this, this, these boxes of protein bars. So we actually bribed our patients, but food sells. You guys know that. So what happened in one day, we got 40 video testimonials and 20 print testimonials. So we took a picture of the patient at the front in front of our mission statement. Um, you know, we had the, the, the they, they wrote in the office a testimonial, and then the videos were done in the back room, took about a minute, minute and a half, posted those on the website, posted those on the TV system. You know, that was my goal is to get 50 for the year. We knocked off 60 in a day. So testimonials um, wow. are the best form of, of endorsement for your practice. Number Number, I guess number five, is which is big right now, is internet and social media. And I can't em emphasize enough, my biggest push right now this year is really, really investing my energy and time into the internet and social media. So, you know, I ask doctors about Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest. Um, do you have that? And are you also capturing uh, people's emails when they come to your website, which is really important? So um, we're going to talk about this in a second, but, you know, uh, the welcome video, which is so important to have in your websites now. When I look at a lot of the websites that are out there, there's the old sort of 2000 look. It was good between 2000 and 2010, but the new web-based videos um, have the welcome videos. They have the opt-in boxes. They have the free resources. Um, it's, it's the new way of developing trust which your old websites were just about giving information. And if you do your Google Analytics on your website, which everybody should be doing on a monthly report, you might be shocked to see the results you're getting. So, you know, um, we've actually decided that we're going to offer website services, and doctors can actually get the websites done properly and with SEO technology, putting your URL 
uh, in the first three spots on the home page. And really that's where you want to be too, guys. So I'm talking about marketing. It's having the right website in the right spot. If I can't find you, if I type in your name, your city, and chiropractor, or just your city chiropractor, I've moved to your town, can I find you? And that's really the acid test. So make sure that you've got a great uh, website and, and social media. The next one is pictures. And what I mean by pictures is you want to have pictures of you, of your social life, whether it's on Facebook, of your welcome video, which we just talked about that's interactive. A lot of people don't do this. They'll have a website, and they use a stock photo of a happy family. I'll ask, is, is that you and your wife? She's beautiful. Your kids are gorgeous. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm single. I don't have that. Well, why would you have a family picture? It's a family practice. I get it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have um, pictures and uh, videos where possible of you talking. Uh, don't, use, don't use the stock photos. Again, that's the old look. Um, but pictures are key, especially if you can have uh, children or CAs. I've got one doctor. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a great guy, but he's got these four beautiful CAs all around him, and that's his, his, um, his welcome video and his, his welcome picture on his, on his website. It draws a lot of people in. The next, and this is, this is critical, doctors listen, is what we call the Parthenon effect. The Parthenon effect is also known as the multiple pillar approach to marketing. And when I walk into a doctor's office, one of the first and favorite places I like to go is into their marketing war room. And I go into the war room and I go, okay, show me your marketing. What, what's going on for the next 30 days? And some doctors will say, well, you know, I've got a, um, um, a workshop. I go, okay, great, awesome. And what else? And that's it. They have one thing. I go, but you're not doing anything else? Well, no. Well, let's take a look at what we need to do to really get 10 or 12 things going in your practice. There is a direct relationship between the number of pillars you're having going in your practice and the number of new patients coming in. And the pillar refers to the Parthenon in Greece. It's, you know, it's got multiple pillars holding up a roof. And I tell doctors, you take out a pillar, that roof is still, still going to hold up. So you go and do a screening and it flops. Well, that can happen. You know, 20% of the time, your marketing efforts might go belly up. But you've got another... Um, you know, eight pillars that are going to hold you up or help hold up your marketing efforts. And when I look at the success of my months where I was getting 80, 90, 100 plus new patients, um, you know, we had multiple marketing tools going on. And, and that, I remember that was the year that my wife and I were practicing together, we really broke from 600 to 800 to 1,000 a week. We just, just rocked it because it was all about the new patient machine. And there is a direct relationship between the number of new patients you see and um, the volume and growth you practice. So that's really important is looking at the things you love to do, the things that have the highest return on investment, um, the things that are professional. And again, you're going to throw direct response in there where possible, but multiple pillars. I'll talk about a few of those in a second. So those are the, some of the key elements that you need in your marketing and your marketing effort. And if you take all of those different sort of elements, then what you want to do is you want to put those into – um, some of the marketing tools at work. And, you know, this is one of the travesties that we see right now in our profession and why we're seeing only 2% of the population is because doctors either have a hesitation to market themselves, um, a fear of what the public will think, what others will think. And, you know, I just, I just ask them this one question. Is this about you or is this about them? So one of the premises behind your screening is not just about getting new patients and, and having a better lifestyle, it really comes down to a spiritual connotation of saving lives. I really believe that because I had a doctor uh, that was hesitant on doing screenings. And he says, you know, just patients are going to see me out there and people are going to think differently of me. I said, yeah, but that might be a possibility. You might have like one in five people might see and think that. But I said, at the end of the day, let me ask you a question. What's more painful, sitting in your office with no one to adjust or – um, the possible pain of somebody seeing you at a screening where you're actually talking to people. And he says, I get it. Because just like you guys on this call, I remember back in 1992 when I started my practice and I had a little office. The, the guy did an independent contractor, gave me this little office. It was probably about six feet by about eight. So I know 50 square feet of an office, enough for a chair and a, and a, and a desk. I remember looking out the door, at the front door of the office, looking for that next new patient to walk in. Right out of school thinking, yep, this is it. Uh, they're going to come pouring in because I got my sign up front. This is chiropractor, you know, accepting new patients, and they're going to come running in. I remember I could hear crickets that day, and I thought to myself, this isn't going to work. 
and for some of the doctors on this call, some of you are feeling that same discomfort as well. It's like, man, I had a bad month. It's you know, August 28th, and I had only four or five people in the month of August, and two of them I never came back, and I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills this, this month. And it comes down to um, what if you had 20 or 25 or 30 or 40 new patients? Would that make a difference in your month? And if you are cranking 30 and 35 and 40 and you want to get to the next level of 50 and 60, does that extra 10 or 20 new patients make a difference? You betcha. Because there's not a better joy for the chiropractors on this call with me today knowing that when you have a room full of adjustments and you're adjusting back and forth, you know, um, 100 a day or 200 a day, that's the biggest thrill. And you look at your day and you go, woohoo, I had a great day. I served a lot of people. You know, I got paid for it. That's, that's a thrill of being a chiropractor. So, you know, when I talk about the tools that work, guys, just remember that the premise behind this is not about marketing. Marketing is just a, a definition of a word used to really create an extension of your four walls around your community. That's all it is. It's about getting people uh, to understand uh, an awareness that you have a service that they need. Not that you need them, but that they need you because they're sick and dying on the inside regardless if they feel it or not. That, you know, we, we live in a sick care world in an in a economic health care war. It is a war. And that we have a responsibility, a moral obligation to get out there and at least tell the truth to people. So, you know, I tell doctors, let's time to get our heads out of our ass and realize that, you know, we have an obligation, whether it's internet-based or whether it's meet-and-greet-based, to get out there and start serving people. So let me just talk about, you know, the 10 tools that are currently working today that worked in my practice and that are working around the world. And number one I'm going to talk about is, is really like the meet-and-greet, and that's screenings. I can't emphasize enough, especially doctors on this call who are starting out, you know, the first couple of years in practice, is that by having screenings and when done properly, they will build your practice. We have a doctor that started right out of school, and she learned how to do a screening day one. I mean, we actually trained her for three months before she actually went into practice. And she went from zero to 225 patient visits per week within one year. And when I asked her at a seminar, I said, Maria, what was the key to your success? And she says, Mike, she says, I knew no other way. I just did everything you taught me, and it worked like a charm. And she says, you know, before I know it, I was over 200 patient visits a week in one year. And that's fresh out of school. Now, we could reproduce that with all the kids coming out of school. Wow, we'd have an incredible freshman out there. But the screenings where you, you actually have maybe a, a CLA Insight subluxation station, you have a posture machine, um, whatever you might have, and the ability to sit and talk to people and invite them into your practice for you know, a low entrance fee exam. There's your direct response, $35, $37, $20, whatever you guys are doing out there. It makes a world of difference. And, you know, I, I have a good friend, uh, Matt Hubbard. I remember I was down in San Diego, and I was lecturing with him one day, and they were doing a screening in the parking lot of Kaiser Permanente. It's a health insurance uh, company. And there, there was the associate in there, and he was sitting there talking to people. And I said, you know, send them back to me, and I'm going to close them for you. And we went boom, 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 boom. I think we closed about 15 people in an hour. Screenings work if you know how to do it. If you know how to develop rapport, if you know how to, you know, um, bond with people and, and give them an offer and explain to them what's wrong with them uh, in an ethical, professional manner, they'll want to come in and see you. So I always recommend to doctors, number one, is learn the art of the screening. Number two, and this is the hardest part for some doctors, is lunch and learns, is the ability to get in front of people. I recommend groups of, you know, 12 or more and talk a message for an hour. You know, make sure you have a belly of chiropractic in there where you're talking about inside out and ability to heal itself and how their health problems, their body signals are, you know, as a, as a warning signal by the body's innate intelligence, something is wrong. So you want to be able to get, a, I, I recommend, at least two lectures a month um, and be able to um, put yourself in front of groups of people. When I looked at my rise from scratch to, you know, a thousand a week in my profession, in my business, how did I do it? It was really based on meet and greets, the screenings, and the lunch and learns. The next, and I touched on a base on this, is an incredible website working in a 2013 model, not 2010 and less, not, you know, here's my practice, here's my name, here's my phone number, but an opt-in box system, a welcome video, something's going to capture their emails and their name, 
um, having free resources, having your blog. You've got to have a blog there as well. We have articles that go up every week. Uh, you know, doctors can go to and, and get mine at, at my website. I give them those for free because I'm always educating. And, you know, people then come and buy products or use my coaching services. So same with your practice, the same idea. SEO technology, search engine optimization, and social media like the Facebook and Twitter. You know, we use um, Dr. Matt Loop. Uh, out of Atlanta, Georgia. I work with Matt. A lot of my clients use him, and, and the guy is the king of social media. Amazing guy. Very, very outgoing, very friendly, but extremely knowledgeable as a doctor of chiropractic in the social media and SEO technology world. So, you know, for those of you who are who are looking at, you know, getting, if you have a great website and you're looking at um, increasing your new patient traffic, um, you want to use Matt Loop Services, and he's at dcincome.com. Just an incredible, incredible resource, a high return on investment when you invest with him as well. Um, the next one is um, Talking Tick. You know, I can't say enough about the ability to stop talking about you and your golf game and, you know, how your kids are doing and just talk tick. I have a, a, a belief system that if you have a gift of the gap and you have a patient that's in that room and you can spin it or you have a theme that day or a theme that week and you just talk tick, you just talk about the power that made the body, the heels of the body and above, down, inside, out. And when they come in, hey, Dr. Mike, I got a headache. You got to be subluxated. Let's get you on the table. Let's check you out. Let's adjust you. Let's turn on the power. If you can talk like that, regardless of what they think or say, and you're excited about what you do, you automatically become a magnetic marketer. And what I mean by that is when you're pumped and you're jacked and you're energetic about who you are, your message, and your philosophy, you're going to see people coming in droves. They'll be waiting lists in your practice. I remember that you know, Lisa and I, myself had a year. We, we just cranked and we just talked tick, and that was our policy. If, if you caught your, your, you know, the other doctor saying anything outside of chiropractic, you had permission to take an elastic and twang it at each other. And, you know, we kept each other accountable. And by talking tick, by giving out handouts, by giving out health passes, by, you know, asking for referrals from that perspective, people get excited and they start to refer. And it's sort of like you get into that, that sweet spot in practice, that Zen moment, where you're just um, talking philosophy and talking tick. So, you know, want to make sure you have a theme that your team is, is on board with you and you're, you're huddling in your morning and then you're setting the, the course of the day and, and making sure you talk tick. Uh, number four, and this is, this is a great retention tool as well. I'm a big advocate of this, is having a monthly power workshop. Now, if you're a client of mine or a creating wellness client, we actually are, are developing and giving you 12 different power workshops in exchange for feedback. And those power workshops are basically a workshop that's based on wellness and health that patients come to. And inside of that power workshop is a um, chiropractic body. So you always re-anchor them back to, um, back to tick, back to above, down, inside of, back to the importance of, of neurological integrity and a proper functioning and, and structured spine. So the workshops can be on energy, they can be on nutrition, they can be in detox, they can be in healthy living, but always come back to that four-dimensional model, right, about... Um, you know, be fit, eat right, think well, and, and staying adjusted. You know, that's what Chestnut talks about. That's what we talk about at Creating mm -hmm. Wellness is really anchoring back to chiropractic and everything you do. So I think one of the challenges that we see is we see these people that are dropping out. A lot of my clients will ask me, well, why are people dropping out? Where's my retention problem? I ask them, where are you resetting every 30 days with these people? Just get excited about these workshops. Invite them out. Rent a hall if you have to. Get them to bring a friend. And then you convert that friend into a chiropractic patient as well. Number five is um, what I call big fish. And a big fish should be done every quarter, every, every practice. Like you do it maybe in January, then May, then September, and again in, in maybe you know, December. But a big fish is a quarterly event like a children's health fair. One of my clients, Dr. Darren Ponflet, created a children's health fair very similar to Kids Day International with a different sort of flavor and flair to it. And Darren uh, will produce anywhere from 3,500 to 4,000 people that will go through his practice in a day. And they will produce anywhere from, you know, 150 plus new patients, which still trickle in. But most important, when you're doing a children's health fair, it sets you, sets the mark as you being the go-to guy in your community. And he has uh, created a million-dollar practice from this 
just by the ability to drive people into his practice on a regular basis. So I think, you know, the children's health care is critical. And then on the flip side of that, um, what we've done in the past, which I really love doing, is movie nights. And a movie night is where you can do it in office, you can rent a community center, a movie theater, like on a Monday night, and you air, um, like Doctored or Food Inc., or any of those, you know, drug ink sort of um, movies that are educational, you bring your patients out. You get them to bring a friend. Uh, you serve healthy food. You introduce your services at the end. You give them a health pass. I have a whole protocol, two conference calls and a, and a video on how to actually do a movie night. And, you know, the doctors who follow this are very, very successful with it. It takes a bit of, you know, setting up to do, but I think it's, it's absolutely important. Um, another great tool that I love doing, I do this about every um, three to four months, and this is my, I'm throwing a bone to everybody out there, and just write this down, put three stars beside it, and just do it. I mean, anyone can make this flyer. It's called Bring a Friend or Family Member Week. And what we do is we just have a flyer, you know, put a picture of the Simpsons on it or just a healthy family. And what we say is during this week, you know, the last month of September, um, and that would be like, you know, September 20 third to the September 27th is bring a friend and family member week for a complimentary exam. Um, you can do bring a coworker week, you can bring a child week, but one of the things that we've decided when we do this on a regular basis and we just waive the fee, that's the only time that we do this, um, we'll get 15 um, to 20 new ones every time. And that's the opportunity for, you know, friends to come in, um, spouses to come in that couldn't make it. You want to run it on a Saturday. You don't normally work Saturday. It's a great day to do it. But it's, I call it a cleanup process in marketing. It's no different than you see companies having a sale or doing whatever. I think it's a great and, and magical tool. A lot of my doctors use it, and they go, wow, I can't believe it, you know, 10 to 15 new ones. So bring a friend or family member week is, is huge. Um, the next one, point number eight, <coughs> is um, social um, marketing. And social marketing is the ability um, to hit people en masse. You can do social um, marketing by a direct mail piece, which back in the 80s and 90s worked very well. And we saw with print, we saw a decrease in the responses that we used to get. And it's one of the reasons you see um, less magazines and newspapers being used nowadays. And what we're seeing is this evolution towards uh, social marketing, and that would be the Groupons, the deal finds. And I realize that some you know, states and some provinces have limitations on this, so you do want to check with your governing board. But when we basically took um, social media and social marketing, combined the two, um, by group under deal fine, we had a number of our doctors that were getting 151 new ones, 171. We had one lady um, that got 251 new patients from it, and we saw this flood of new patients in their office. Now, I think this is a great practice builder. Um, if I'm going to do it in my practice maybe once or twice a year, I wouldn't recommend you do it on a regular basis because one of the challenges you see with things like Groupon and DealFine is you get the tire kickers, people who are either coming in for the deal, they don't stick around. So you really have to filter these people by having proper procedures, proper techniques, proper exam procedures and pre-consultations. And when done properly, you can convert more of these people to a long-term care. Um, bundled um, with another service in your practice, if you have massage or orthotics, it works even better than just having it single. So the social marketing, the social media uh, is very, very critical. Uh, the next is the family gift certificates. The family gift certificates is a system that you know we have created over the years and it works very, very well with regards to, um, with regards to um, taking one new patient and converting them into two, three, four new patients. And it's a simple, simple process that we have where you've developed rapport with the new patient. On the checkout from day one, it can happen on a day two or even day three, but we discovered on the checkout when they have a great experience, you leave them with a gift. And here's, let me just sort of segue into this. Let's pretend that you went to a new city and somebody recommended and raved about this incredible dentist that um, everybody went to, everybody loved this guy. So you went to see this dentist, you had an incredible experience, first day cleaning, 
low entrance fee. You love the staff there. And on the way out, you know, the staff member at the front said, oh, ours is a family practice, by the way, a family dental practice. And we have a special gift for you, and that's a family gift certificate. It allows your whole family to come in for dental cleaning valued at $275. Um, all of our t- patients take advantage of this. Um, uh, would you like to book your children and your husband? What would you say? You would jump all over that. Absolutely. So we just did the same thing we did with chiropractic. And the CA basically says, we have a special gift for you. It's called a family gift certificate. And I want to present this to you. It's for uh, a spinal neurological checkup. No obligation to be under care. It's, it's included in your examination. It's valued at 275 What day is best to examine your children and your husband? Well, if you heard that, as a female doctor or your wife and your kids as a male doctor, you would probably be jumping all over that too. So this is a family gift certificate where we put our promotions right into our procedures and our procedures into our promotions and where we can take one person and nine out of 10 times we'll convert that person onto some sort of, um, you know, new patient um, uh, examination and then into a family-based practice. And this is where, you know, we had a lot of families in my practice, and this was the key to do this. Um, number nine is the ability to ask for referrals. And, I, you know, I really need to share a story with you guys because, you know, I've been coached over 20 years, about seven different coaches. And I had an issue with um, a technique that I was taught. And a lot of you doctors on this phone, when your innate is talking to you or you're ruminating about something, listen to that little voice on the inside. Because we had a technique that I was taught about how to ask for referrals. And it was all about me. It was about me getting more new patients. It was about me, you know, driving my practice up. And I just meditating on it one day, um, that little voice inside said to me, why don't you give a gift of health instead? And I went, hmm, a gift of health. So what I did is when I'm talking tick in my practice, I made sure that on the sixth adjustment, on the twelfth adjustment, and probably about the third month or at least the end of the year, I would ask that patient for a referral. But here's how I did it. I would say to them, Mike, you've enjoyed um, the chiropractic since you've been under care. You've seen great results, correct? And say, yeah. Uh, I would love to have a thousand patients like you. And I want to give you the gift of health to a friend or family member it's just a health pass with a brochure on their health problem. Is there anyone you know as a coworker or family member that has a health problem that might benefit from a gift of health? I didn't ask them for a referral. I was giving them something to give to a friend. And when I did that, I had this evolutionary change in my practice. My practice absolutely exploded. And I gave out a ton of those one day. And on that Monday, I had... 20, it was a Tuesday, the next day, I had 22 new patients. I'll never forget that to this day. I've never seen that before. I've never seen it happen, but I was just in this different state. I was just gifting these. I wanted to try something different. I had probably 200 people in that day, and I just did, that's all I ticked. And the next day, I had 22 new ones. And I was like, wow, wow, that was unbelievable. So by giving the gift of health as a way of asking for referrals, it takes stress off of you because it doesn't look like you're begging for new ones, and we hate to use that word, but, you know, it's our dirty little secret, right, guys, is that, you know, I hate to ask. Don't see it as asking because it's not about you. It's about them coming back to what I talked about, and we segued in on this premise. It's about saving lives and helping others. And the last thing I just want to share with the doctors on the, on the call is one of the key areas I think that we need to focus on is what I call corporate wellness. And the reason being is when you look at corporations right now, um, we're seeing a 12% increase in drug costs. Uh, We're seeing less um, um, productivism by the employees, less presenteeism by the employees. We're seeing healthcare costs going through the roof and you realize that you can't put a drugged up person, you know, on a machine or, you know, in a, in a working device. So um, one of the things that um, we have actually worked with is we work with a doctor, Dr. Shreen Van Wagner out of Richmond, Virginia. And Dr. Van Wagner is the queen of corporate. Um, Last year, she was able to uh, step into 
15 different companies. I've got over 200 new patients from this. She gets in on a nutritional fitness level, and then that's really the foot in the door that opens it up for her to actually um, teach corporate. And she actually runs a corporate program. Um, if you want to find out more from her, um, her email is cvanwagner at creatingwellness.com, cvanwagner at creatingwellness.com. You can actually go to uh, and be certified in, in corporate wellness, which is kind of cool. So uh, that is, you know, I think that is uh, the, the wave of tomorrow because think about this. If you have a city and there is, you know, corporations and businesses, and especially, you know, 50 employees and up, and you can get in as their corporate wellness doctor. You're teaching your power workshops. Uh, you might do a fitness nutrition program. Uh, you're in there scanning people. And they get the big idea. All you need is three or four people to become new patients. And then it creates this domino effect and everybody wants to come in. Because nobody wants to be on the drugs nowadays. And, and the public is ready for the chiropractic message. But it's really how do I get into the corporations? How do I get in and, and do the talks? And how do I get in there and introduce my services? Well, this is what she teaches. And she's very, very good at it. We have a number of doctors who are now doing this and, and really cracking open up the doors. So those are the 10 key areas that currently work in chiropractic that, you know, I, I sold my practice. I'm full-time coaching. I, I do go down to Turks and Caicos and relieve that practice once in a while just to stay wet in practice, which I love doing. But, um, you know, we're growing um, here at Chiropractic Masters, and um, we're just about ready to launch our new home-based uh, coaching program in a week, so doctors can find out more about that. But those are the key things that I really wanted to touch on today um, with regards to um, – the keys to successful marketing and you know what's working and the elements doctors should have. Well, I'll tell you, Dr. Reed, all I had to say is, wow, I don't know when the last webinar I was on where I took so many notes and really got so much pure value uh, from a speaker. And so, I mean, I just, I really, I really do thank you for sharing all of that with us. I mean, that was, that's, that's meat and potato stuff. And I, I needed to hear that today. And uh, it, it's fired me back up to, um, to man, uh, there's so many things that you cover today that, you know, we, we may have heard of, but we're not doing. And we're not consistently, you, you know, implementing these things in our, in our practice. And no wonder your, your um, clients are having so much success um, when you've developed systems well, you know, to yeah. allow them to implement this stuff, you know. And, and really, that's what it is, you know. It, it, it comes down to, and I've heard that so many times, is that, uh, you know, the tools are there. You just have to use them. And I, I think, I'm not sure if it's just a, a lack of willingness or laziness, but really just, I tell doctors, bend over, pick up those tools and run with it. And and they work. Yeah. Our clients are growing 30 to 150% per year. Um, a lot of them breaking the million dollar marks. And it all, it's a systematized um, business. That's what we are. We are fee for service and more so every day that if you have the tools and you brand yourself and you have the, you know, the multiple pillars and you just apply proper day one, day two in education, um, you know, people will pay for your service of, of a loving chiropractic. You just have to be able to uh, deliver the good. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Now, yeah, absolutely. On a call, yeah, um, we actually have um, three free video trainings um, that uh, I wanted to gift the doctors, and we just cut one on uh, the 10 secrets to the million-dollar practice. So what I did, I looked at the elements um, that over the years, 14 years of coaching, that actually work. Like, how did this doctor make the million dollars, and how did this doctor make the million dollars, and how did this one make the million? And we looked at congruencies and commonalities in these different practices, and we took those all out. And what we did is we put together a video, and it's called the 10 secrets to the million dollar practice. And, and if the doctors go to the website at chiropractic-masters.com, that's www.chiropractic.com, hyphen dash masters.com they can actually um get that video a second video is on um the 10 keys to culture it's how to build titanium teams the biggest challenge doctors have other than marketing is how do i build that new that that dynamic team so i've gone through the 10 keys of culture that you've got to have in your practice when you have these 10 keys of culture your, your practice grows because the girls at the front desk now take ownership. And then uh, there's a third uh, video there as well that they can pick up as well, <coughs> excuse me, on secrets of successful marketing as well, 
similar to what we did today, that they can actually um, watch me present this, and I'll show examples and things like that of, of the different marketing tools. And then they can you know, browse the website, and there's products if they want any products on marketing as well. But you know, the whole idea, I just want to share with doctors, uh, give some free training videos that doctors can have, and I, I guarantee if you just adopt half of these principles, a quarter of these principles, um, you're going to uh, really blossom. Awesome. Well, I tell you what, I can't thank you enough, and I know that the, the doctors on the line right now are saying the same thing. They're probably just excited as, as I am to go to your website and watch these videos. I'm going there right now after we get off the phone. Um, and that website again, guys, just to, just to make sure you got it, is www.chiropractic-masters.com. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Reed, for your time tonight. We really, really appreciate your your wisdom and your and your value that you gave us. Absolutely amazing webinar. I mean, I honestly, I've I've I'm a webinar junkie, and this this webinar was absolutely awesome. So I really thank you. It was my pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. And thanks, guys, for listening. Just run with the stuff. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. All right. Thanks. Have a great night. Thank you.